Hello everybody, this is Paul Hicks talking to you about philosophy again. Today we're going to talk about how to assess the truth value of statements or the acceptability of statements. Uh, we talked in a previous video about the nature of truth um, and there's some pretty abstract concepts and some very abstract theories that we talk about what truth happens to be. So now I want to kind of ground us a little bit more, get away from the abstract theories and just say, when can I accept a certain statement is true versus being false? So let's go ahead and look at three statements if I can. Um, the first, all bachelors are married. Two, all bachelors are unmarried. And three, all bachelors are happy. Well, let's go ahead and think about the truth value of those statements. All right, so let's take the first one. All bachelors are married. Is that a true statement? or a false statement. Given the definition of a bachelor as an unmarried adult man, let's go ahead and right, accept that definition. Then when we say all bachelors are married, what you're saying is unmarried adult men are married, and that seems to be false because that can't be true. This is what we call a contradiction. All right, we'll get to that definition in just a bit. Let's look at number statement number two. All bachelors are unmarried. Well, is that a true statement? It seems to be a true statement. It's true by the definitions of the terms used, right? Because bachelor means unmarried adult man. Well, what we're saying then is unmarried adult men are unmarried. Well, that's absolutely true. And we call a statement which is true by definition of the terms used analytic. So number two is an analytic statement. All right, number three, all bachelors are happy. Is that true or is that false? Notice it's possible, logically speaking, to be true, but it's also possible, logically speaking, to be false, right? I mean, you can imagine all bachelors are happy, but you can also conceive of an unhappy bachelor. So it's neither necessarily true or necessarily false. If it's logically possible to be true and logically possible to be false, we call it synthetic. So, let's go through these statements again. The first one, all bachelors are married. This is a contradiction. It is false by definitions of the terms used. Number two, all bachelors are unmarried. This is true by definitions of the terms used, therefore it's analytic. And three, all bachelors are happy. This possibly is true, it's possibly is false, but uh, we don't know just by the terms used, so therefore we call it synthetic. All right. Uh, seems pretty simple, right? So if I was to give you, say, on an exam, some examples like this, statements like um, people who run move their bodies. Is that analytic, synthetic, or a contradiction? People who run move their bodies. That's an, that's an analytic statement. It it's just has to be true. Blue is a color. Now, some people want to say, well, by blue, you might be talking about, like, the I feel blue or the musical genre playing the blues or something like that. Uh -uh. Let's go back with language here. Meaning is used. The meaning of the word blue here is understood to be a color because of the context of the statement blue is a color. Right? So here, blue is a color. Is that analytic, synthetic, or a contradiction? Blue as a color is analytic. Um, Elvis survived his death. All right. Elvis survived his death. Is this analytic, synthetic, or a contradiction? It's a contradiction. Because what does it mean to survive? It means that you didn't die. Well, what does it mean to die? It means you didn't survive. So you can't have somebody surviving their death. That doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever. Um, she was the third person I lost my virginity to. And that doesn't make any sense either because once you lose your virginity, it's gone. You can't get a second and third time to lose it. Um, cats are fluffy. That's synthetic. The reason being is some cats are fluffy, some cats are not. I can at least imagine a cat that is not fluffy, and I can imagine a cat that is fluffy. So there's the possibilities. Uh, philosophers are smart. 
Why I'd like to think of that as an analytic statement? It's not. It is a synthetic statement. Right? Some philosophers are smart. Some philosophers aren't that smart. Those are both logical possibilities. If you could conceive of a philosopher not being smart, well, then you've shown that statement to be false in that instance. But you can also conceive of it as being true. All right. So very, very simple examples there. Um, let me give you an interesting case um, uh, by, uh, I think it was Hillary Putnam in his, in his paper, It Ain't Necessarily So. He says, imagine this. Um, imagine that while we were all asleep last night, space aliens came down and they stole all of our cats. Every single cat they took. But don't worry, they replaced it with an identical looking cat that is not a living animal cat, but rather a synthetic robot cat that looks exactly like your cat. Now, you don't know that they did this. All right, now I'm going to give you a statement. Cats are animals. Is that analytic, synthetic, or a contradiction? Right? Analytic, synthetic, or a contradiction. In the case where space aliens took the cats and replaced them with synthetic robot cats, the statement cats are animals is false. But it seems that when we say cats are animals, that would in fact be analytic. I'm not going to give you something that difficult on, on an exam, so don't worry about it. But this is how serious philosophers have to take this. Cats are animals. It seems to be analytic, but it might just be synthetic. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and move past that, the uh, truth value of statements there. We're going to come back to this uh, in the rest of the semester a lot, so I need to make sure that you understand the meaning of those statements, okay? Um, now let's talk about conditions. How do we know that if one thing is true, something else is true, or if one proposition is false, the other proposition is false? Well, we look at conditions. And conditions can be a sufficient condition or it can be a necessary condition. All right, so a condition. Um, think of it this way. Uh, being at least 35 years of age as a condition for being president of the United States. So here's what I want you to do. Sufficient. A, X is a sufficient condition for Y when if x is true, y is true. x is a necessary condition for y, when if x is false, y is false. Those are the definitions, and you just need to keep those in mind. A sufficient condition, if x is true, y is true. Necessary condition, if x is false, y is false. All right? Now, there are four possible ways of combinations of those conditions. A condition could be sufficient but not necessary. It could be necessary but not sufficient. It could be both necessary and sufficient. And it could be neither necessary nor sufficient. Those are all the four logical possibilities. Now, what I'm going to ask of you is to say, um, what is X and what is Y? Tell me whether it's sufficient or tell me whether it is necessary both or neither. So if I take the uh, statement I just gave you, being at least 35 as a condition for being president of the United States, is it sufficient? If it's true you're at least 35, if it, is it true that you're president of the United States? No. I'm 43. I'm over 35. I'm not president of the United States. So it's not a sufficient condition. Now let's understand it to be, if it's false you're at least 35, is it false you're president of the United States? That actually seems to hold, and the reason being is part of the, in the Constitution, one of the requirements for being President of the United States is to be at least 35 years old. So while that is not a sufficient condition, it is in fact a necessary condition. All right? Um, let's think of another one here. Receiving an A in this class as a condition for passing the class. So now what we have is X is receiving an A in the class, and we have Y passing the class. So let's determine, is it sufficient, necessary, both, 
or neither. If you receive an A in this class as a true statement, is it also true that you passed the class? Yes. If it's false you received an A in this class, is it false you passed the class? No. Because you can still pass this class and get a B or a C. So now we have an understanding of the condition. If you receive an A in this class, that is a sufficient condition for passing the class. If you do not receive an A in the class, it is not a condition for passing this class. Therefore, we have a sufficient but not a necessary condition. All right, let's go ahead and think of another one. Receiving a at least a C in this class as a condition for passing the class. Let's just assume for the sake of argument here that you do need at least a C. So now we have X and Y. X is receiving at least a C. Y is passing the class. If, re if receiving at least a C is true, is it true you pass the class? Yes. So receiving a C, or at least a C, is sufficient for passing the class. Now we have to determine is it necessary. If it's false you received at least a C, is it false you passed the class? Yes. If you did not get at least a C, you didn't pass the class. So what do we have here? We have a condition which is both sufficient and necessary. All right. Let me go ahead and give you one more. Um, how about um, Pam loving John as a condition for John loving Pam? So now we go ahead and we separate X and Y. X happens to be Pam loves John. All right, why? John loves Pam. So let's go through this. If X is true, is Y true? If Pam loves John is true, does that mean John loves Pam? No. You know, unfortunately, you can love somebody and they don't love you back. So it's not a sufficient condition. Let's determine if it's a necessary condition. If it's false that Pam loves John, is it false? that John loves Pam. No. Right? Therefore, what we have is neither a sufficient condition or a necessary condition. All right? It's pretty simple. Understand what X and Y is, and then just run it through. Sufficient condition, X is a sufficient condition for Y, when if X is true, Y is true. X is a necessary condition for Y, when if X is false, Y is false. All right, and then the, I want to just kind of go back a little bit here. An analytic statement is one that is true by definitions of the terms used. A synthetic statement is one where it is logically possible to be true, but also logically possible to be false. And a contradiction is one where the terms used require that the statement is false because it's inconsistent. It contradicts itself. All right. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. You guys have a good day.